This is Steven Anderson. He's an NIFB preacher. So he kind of founded a new denomination, basically. It's New Independent Fundamental Baptist Church. And he was just exposed for mistreating his kids, to put it politely. That's a complete understatement, needless to say. So it sparked something of a um, like a, an internal struggle in the church where people are leaving the church, like not just leaving, but like pastors are leaving the church as they're splitting off from the NIFB and stuff. It's fascinating to watch. But some of them are not. Some of them are, are defending what he's done. Okay, this is Salvador Alvarez, also a monstrously evil person. I don't want him to get a free pass on this because some of the shit that he does and says is disgusting. But he's splitting off from the NIFB, for example. So first of all, as many of you may have seen, I have publicly broken fellowship with uh, Pastor Jonathan Shelley, not because of any major doctrinal issues, but because of a huge moral issue, specifically because he does not judge uh, people for hitting children with electrical cords. and pe Yeah, so you get the idea. Anyway, Steven Anderson responded to all of this and was complaining that people were basically mistreating him or misinterpreting and blah, blah, blah. He's always the victim in all of these uh, these situations, right? My accusers teamed up with a literal Satan worshiping trans. Amen. Okay. And you know what? We could pretty much almost just close our Bibles and go home right now. Okay. Because anybody with a brain in their head knows that you don't go to Satan to tell the truth. You go to Satan because you want to tell lies. Okay. God, dude. I mean, his uh, sermons have pretty much revealed everything to us. I don't know why he's even denying this. Anyway, uh, I wanted to listen to this secret recording that was taken at his church, at uh, Jonathan Shelley's church, one of his pastors, and he's he is a monstrously evil person himself, and he's decided to defend Stephen Anderson. And this is like a, a private service that was not streamed, but it was recorded internally. So I want to see what he has to say. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. here we go, here we go. Check this one out. This is Jonathan Shelley on the right, and this is Aaron Thompson, I think, in the middle. Hemet Mehta on the left. Good friends with Hemet Mehta. No, what did they do? What did they do to kids? Talk about gay people. What did gay people do to kids? Nothing. We don't know. You, That's the thing. You don't know. To say that people who are gay, who have not been convicted, who have not, as far as you know, done anything, deserve that same penalty as a Nazi, as someone like Osama bin Laden, that is a leap that, again, I am afraid of what message that sends to people who hear that, because you're not, first, the vigilante justice is scary, but the idea that that person deserves some sort of punishment, not because they did something, in which case we have ways of dealing with that, but on the hypothetical theory that they might do something, like, where is that? Anyone is a hypothetical anything horrible. Sure, obviously, but you even, pick even straight people's... people could be a, a, a child molester. And again, it's not... Who could have thunk? Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, obviously, yeah. the Catholic Church is filled with, with child molesters, and there's a lot of preachers, there's a lot of pastors all over this country. Yes, yes, we know. They take advantage of children. What does that have to do with gay people? Because the Bible teaches that it's, it's kind of a result of being a reprobate. Okay, the Bible teaches that? No, it doesn't. That's his interpretation of what the Bible says. The verses that he's referring to are verses that basically says that God gave them up to reprobate minds because they didn't, you know, if you don't obey God, then you're going to be just like an evil person, basically. You're just going to be um, depraved. So in his mind, he's saying being gay is depraved. And since he believes that, he believes that um, God gives people up to be gay. So he's like building assumption upon assumption upon assumption and building all of that on top of what he already believes about what the Bible says, not what it actually says. So um, this is just like made up bullshit, of course. It's someone that hates God, doesn't want to get saved, doesn't believe the gospel. You don't think any Christian vile affections. has ever done anything like that? No, we just, he just said that. A, you don't think any Christian has ever taken advantage of children? And he says no. Because by definition, you're not a Christian if you do that. And B, he's saying 
Hold on, let me step back. Catholic Church is filled with, with child molesters, and there's a lot of preachers, there's a lot of pastors all over this country. Because the- Oh, yeah, and B, um, gay people can't be Christian? And why are we equating being gay with taking advantage of children? How did those two things become synonymous? Are, they are synonymous in his mind. It is psychotic, the stuff that these people believe. So he cares so much about children's well-being, right? Unless it's Steven Anderson hurting children. Let's listen to this secretly recorded footage from his, uh, his church or whatever. Uh, so it, there is no video, really. It's just a lot of this. So I'm just going to switch over so that you don't, yeah. There's no point in watching it anyway. I'm going to make the game big so you guys can watch me play. Very sincere and expressing to you everything that I believe. This is the guy Jonathan Shelley were just listening to a second ago. And everything that I knew at that time. Unfortunately, since then, my position has slightly changed on how I feel about Pastor Anderson dealing with the situation. And I, I want to address that. Now, I, I want to say several things, and then I'm going to allow people to express their opinion if they have a different opinion here or, or whatever. Number one, I want to say this too. No matter what someone's opinion is and the situation dealing with our friend Pastor Anderson, I am going to be gracious. Our friend. To them. And I know that in this room, we have wildly different opinions right now. So uh, Salvador Alvarez came out against Steven Anderson, says, I don't want to be affiliated with the NIFB anymore because that's some real disgusting shit. And in retaliation, this guy, Jonathan Shelley, accused Alvarez of uh, improper behavior, quote unquote, like immediately after all this stuff happened. He claims that he just spun up this ridiculous story about him paying people with church funds to do this and that. And oh, it's just insane. It's all just insane. He's, there's no moral bottom to these people. And that's okay. And I think that we all need to be gracious to everyone, regardless of what position or feeling they have towards him and towards our friend. And, and of course, we are an independent Baptist church. So, you know, we are our own church and we need to worry about our church primarily and we need to love each other in this room right. more than anyone outside this room. Right. That being said, mm. Pastor Anderson has only ever done good to me personally. And he's okay, we're not talking about what he's done to you personally. We're talking about what he's done to his kids. Does he have gummy bears in his ears? Did he forget about this? Only ever helped step past Baptist Church. And therefore, you know, I, I, I very much love him, appreciate him, and I, I, that's never going to change. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't worry about him hitting you. That's the thing. Like, this guy doesn't worry about being hit by Steven Anderson. I'm not talking about you or how he's treated you. My God, bro. These people are just like looking for the excuses the, as much as they do. Digging as deep as they can to find excuses for this behavior is just wild to me. <laughs> I do personally believe that at this time, though, it would be best for him to either take a leave of absence or step down as pastor. Wow, that's a big deal. That's a change. Focus on his family. That being said, I'm not going to personally attack him, preach against him, or do anything like that. I just want to let you guys know first because of the fact that I have taken a public stand already. Now, the reason why I did that is because we had the children's conference coming up very soon that he was scheduled to preach. Oh, dude, they have a children's conference? Chat. And I think for most people, they were going to ask a lot of questions. It was going to be something that we needed to decide what we were going to do. I don't even wow, so Anderson is going to speak at a children's conference, and that's why they had to speak on this. They had no choice. That is fascinating. We asked him prior to this, and prior to all that situation just to not come, just so as there wouldn't be any controversy. But additionally, um, since then, you know, I've uh, learned more information and I, I've kind of changed my opinion on the situation. And I want to give you my- He has not changed his opinion on the situation. He's realized that public outrage has crossed the Rubicon, if you will, the proverbial Rubicon. Opinion about the situation, but the reason why I've changed my mind is not based on 
any specific accusation or anything. It's just simply on facts that I know. Simply on facts that he knows. Yeah. So I wasn't in the room to see Steven Anderson um, treat his kids terrible, make them black and blue. I wasn't there to physically see that happen. So until I'm physically there to see it happen, I'm just not going to believe it. Is that what he's saying? Honestly, I would be surprised if Jonathan Shelley doesn't do the exact same shit. That's probably why he doesn't care about what Steven Anderson has done. And, and here's the facts that I know. Number one is that his four oldest children are attacking him and against him. Okay, that includes his oldest, Solomon. Yeah, you ever wonder why his four oldest kids are like criticizing how he's treated them? You think maybe it's because he's a piece of trash? Is that possible? Isaac, John, and Miriam. And I know Solomon because I personally talked to him about this. I think there are 12 kids total. Okay. Um, additionally, I believe that when he made videos about his brother, that the that, that was inappropriate. And it wasn't so much... What was inappropriate? The, he made videos about his brother. Somebody made videos about his brother? I'm not familiar with this. What's he talking about? Solomon, because I personally talked to him about this, okay? Um, additionally, I believe that when he made videos about his brother, that the, that, that was inappropriate. Does he, when he says brother, does he mean in, like, the proverbial sense, like, we're all brothers in Christ, or does he mean, like, DNA-wise? I'm not sure. So, like... When Isaac Anderson made comments about his brother in Christ publicly, that was inappropriate. Is that what he's saying? I cannot tell. Ultimately, that's the belief, though, that you should never criticize your brother in Christ because it makes him look bad to the outside world, right? And it makes Jesus look bad to the outside world. For the record, this is the exact mindset that led to Jehovah's Witnesses covering up um, CSA, covering up um, kids being taken advantage of by people in the congregations. This exact thing right here. And it, it just like, it blows my mind that, that people are so ready to fall for this state of mind. Like, what is wrong with people that they would think this? And it wasn't so much, some people say he was doxing his brother, which is true. Okay, I'm not sure what he's referring to specifically here. I don't think that I, I personally don't really have a lot of fault for someone doxing their brother in this situation, even though it's illegal, but more about the time. It, it's not illegal, actually. It's not illegal. It, I think probably doxing should be illegal, maybe, but it's not. Because the thing is, is Pastor Anderson's uh, oldest daughter, who's 17, was staying with her family, wouldn't come home, and he's been dealing with that situation, but she has tried to avoid his presence and stayed away from him will not contact the family. Now, unfortunately, he already could not get her to come home and had already gone out there multiple times with police and she was staying away from him like physically a month ago. And so I believe someone who genuinely cared about their parent or their kid and was putting out a public statement for help would have done so right away. If you believe your kid was kidnapped, I do not believe you would wait a month. Mm. To Interesting. So he's saying that Steven Anderson waited to report Miriam kidnapped or whatever when she wasn't. If you didn't see the other things about this, basically, Miriam, when she was like 17, very, very recent, just the, like within months, I think, of this video coming out, she moved to South Carolina with her uncle to basically get away from her dad. And when... He said, when she said, I'm not coming back, her dad got infuriated by that and basically reported her missing and stuff when she wasn't reporting her kidnapped. She wasn't. She was texting him the whole time. He was being a piece of shit to make her life miserable. That's it. That's all there is to it. So anyway, um, that's what was happening. That's what was going on in the past, you know, whatever. Tell people or ask people for help. Um, that being said, additionally, him and his family are both publicly attacking each other right now. And I believe that that is a huge distraction from the cause of Christ. 
and is causing unnecessary strife and hatred for brethren. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the exact mindset that led to Jehovah's Witnesses covering up CSA. There are good people on both sides of this issue right now. And what is, is really sad, saddening for me is how these people are attacking each other. Now, here's the thing. Everything I just said is a fact. It is not my opinion. It is not, it is not something that I speculated. It's just... Um, no, he did give his opinion, actually, through this entire thing. This whole thing was his opinion. He said, in my opinion, it's wrong that he's... Blah, blah, blah. In my opinion, Steven Anderson shouldn't speak at the place. It was all opinion, like all of it. What are you talking about? Stuff that I know to be absolutely true, and that's what I'm basing my decision on, okay? Other things, though, here's just my personal opinion. Ooh, here we go. Buckle up. I, I feel like, unfortunately, there's been a lack of care or concern for his children throughout this based on the conversation a lack of care or concern like the dudes being neglectful no that's not the problem the problem was never neglect the problem was him using them as a punching bag literally okay what is wrong with him see this is another big problem in my opinion even if people aren't covering things up to protect God's good name or whatever other stupid shit, they're at least more hesitant. They give deference. They, they give the benefit of the doubt to people who don't deserve it because they're brothers in Christ. It's just wrong. I've had it been one Additionally, there's been some inconsistent testimony between- There's been inconsistent testimony. What testimony has been inconsistent? No, I've listened to sections of all of them, except Solomon, maybe. I haven't heard Solomon's. I didn't even know he came out. And I've listened to Isaac's and Miriam's almost in their entirety. I got like an hour, hour and a half into both of them. So I can say that without a shadow of a doubt, there's no inconsistency in anything that I've seen. None. I mean, literally, I've watched hours of this stuff. Hours. And I've seen no inconsistency him and his wife in the private communications that I have. Additionally, I personally believe that he's invoked God several times and a need to persuade, saying statements like, as God is my witness, and in a private conversation with me, saying, I would stand before God right now and say I've done nothing wrong. Okay, well, he's lying. <laughs> and what does he mean by nothing wrong? Does he mean that he's just followed bi biblical instructions in his head? Yeah. Everybody knows that he believes he's following biblical instructions, first of all. And second, what was second? I was trying to remember now. Hang on. Um, oh, people lie all the time. Greg Locke said, as God is my witness, may he strike me down with lightning right now if I'm not telling the truth. And he, then, he proceeded to lie. He just lied. And I know for a fact that he lied because he was claiming some shit about technology that he didn't realize was complete bullshit and disproved his whole story. So people do that all the time, especially preachers. They do that shit all the time. They, they just, they lie. And they know that you're going to believe their lie because you can't imagine a situation in which somebody would say, as God is my witness, and then lie. This is, this is one of the main reasons, in my opinion, why religion is so destructive, because it strips people of all skepticism. It strips them of all distrust or all um, hesitance to accept stories. Somebody tells you a story in the name of God, swearing on, you know, their mom's grave or swearing on God or whatever. People instantly believe it. It's like a get out of jail free card. Christianity is a get out of jail free card for way too many people. And that disturbed me. Now he says that, well, the Bible says God's my witness in Romans chapter 1 with the Apostle Paul. Maybe I'm wrong in that interpretation, so I'm saying this is my personal opinion, but I felt like that was alarming. He's Wait, does he, is he saying that Anderson said that and he knows that Anderson is lying? It's really hard to tell what he's, what he's saying here. Made no specific reputation video to address the issues, and this is uncharacteristic for him. When he it's not uncharacteristic. It is exactly within his character to do this shit. What? 
I were dealing with the Adam Fannin situation, the Donnie Romero situation, his Tyler Baker situation, or even questions about his ordination, he made long, specific reputation videos to address all of those issues. What he's done so far is uncharacteristic. I talked to him multiple times, and I had a recent conversation with him to try to address what I'm saying to you right now. He did not want to. He did not want to have the conversation with me. He was unwilling to discuss this. Who? Steven Anderson was unwilling, or? With him to try to address what I'm saying to you right now. Hold on. And I had a recent conversation with him to try to address what I'm. I want to understand who. What he's done so far is uncharacteristic. <clears throat> oh yeah. Okay. He is talking about Steven Anderson then. I think. I talked to him multiple times, and I had a recent conversation with him to try to address what I'm saying to you right now. He did not want to, he did not want to have the conversation with me. He was unwilling to discuss this. And he said very alarming things to me. Alarming. God, I wish I knew what he was talking about. Look, this is a private conversation, man. It's a private sermon or whatever. Just tell us. <laughs> One of those is being that he's going to burn it all down. So, Steven Anderson says something alarming to Jonathan Shelley, and that alarming thing is that he's going to burn it all down? Oh shit, that's interesting. Whatever that means. Whatever that means, he says. I'm not uh, changing my stance towards him. Bro, I think you know exactly what that means. I'm still his friend, and I will not abandon him in one of his darkest hours, period. With that being said, my personal stance on the situation has changed. Regarding the allegations being made against him for his children, by his children, I am still going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And another thing that's for sure, his children have been inconsistent in the thing. No, they haven't. They have not been inconsistent. They have been perfectly consistent this whole time. That they said, many of the things that they've told me, I have checked with other witnesses and other individuals and found them to not be true. Some of the things they said I have found to be true. It is a mixed bag. Well, those things you've found to be true at least should be enough to kick him over the edge, right? And, and like, not allow him to work with Steven Anderson, to condemn him publicly. Shouldn't this be enough? And on top of that, you know what Jonathan Shelley did to, um... Salvador Alvarez, when he did this exact thing, you know what he did? I think I played Salvador Alvarez's thing in the beginning, so I'm not going to play it again, but let me show you what he did. Let me show you what Jonathan Shelley said. Again, I watched this video in another clip, so I'm not going to watch it, the whole thing. I just want to show you like a second of it here. Hey, everybody. It's Pastor Jonathan Shelley from Steadfast Baptist Church. And I want to give an update about a situation that's transpired between me and Salvador Alvarez of Pure Woods Baptist Church. Now, I've been in the process of transitioning this church to him, and for some reason he's just started attacking me, lying about me, uh, wanting to break fellowship, publicly uh, broke fellowship with me over the fact that he just kept railing on me and didn't want to take accountability for it. Again, this is all the result of Alvarez speaking out in opposition to Steven Anderson. That's what this whole thing is over. And in this process, he's just completely shown a, a whole new side of himself that I've never seen before. He's extremely prideful, unpredictable. He has scattered his church. Uh, almost every person that I was aware in that church, at least the large percentage of the church has left. They want him to resign. This is all lies, like all of it, everything that he's saying. They don't agree with any of his actions whatsoever. Um, however, you know, even if that is the case, I was still in the process of transferring the, you know, all the different things to him in this process. Um, because I was on all of the banking accounts and all the financial accounts, I had told him this process is going to take a while. And I told him that I'm going to have to resolve whatever credit lines we have because we have giant credit accounts. And so in this process, I've been monitoring this. I don't believe anything out of his mouth. I think he's lying about all of this. To make sure to get everything properly transferred and closed. Well, because of his erratic behavior, I became very nervous about what he may do and try to harm me, harm our credit account. Oh, please. 
uh, try to damage our, our church in some way. And so I've just made sure to get all of the accounts closed or transferred properly. Um, also, there was a, a message that was sent about rent that had not been paid due. And so I was trying to make sure that that was taken care of properly because I'm personally on the lease for Pure Words Baptist Church. The, the lease is to me personally. And so I'm trying to make sure that everything is done appropriately. Uh, when reviewing the account, however, I was looking through the checks to see if rent had been paid. And I noticed that there was a check written to Isaac and okay I don't want to I don't want to go further because basically he pops up his literal routing and account number for the church on screen next like an idiot so I'm gonna leave that off but the point is that Alvarez says he's breaking fellowship with the NIFB and the next thing you know this guy comes out here and accuses Alvarez of a whole bunch of like financial impropriety and stuff it's just so transparent and disgusting. And to make things worse, he did all of this in retaliation against Alvarez. And now he's doing the exact same thing that Al Anderson for one fact got. And now he's doing the exact same thing that Alvarez did. The exact same thing. This is wild. Okay. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to base my decisions on he says, she says, and a lot of controversy. Brother, that's not what's happening. It's not he said, she said. It's they said, and we verified. Unfortunately, I've had to deal with a lot of conflict between people, and it's almost impossible to ever know what's true in any of the situations. It's, very it's not impossible to know what's true. We know what's true. There's a ton of personal testimony, and Steven Anderson has admitted to a lot of this stuff. Are you serious? Very frustrating and everybody has their own perspective and own viewpoint and like he's he is admitted to enough that it this is damning like he should no longer be allowed to run a church because of all the shit that he's admitted to but the thing is these people don't care about steven anderson taking advantage of or hurting his children they don't care because they're violent and angry and vicious and looking for an opportunity to hurt somebody that's just, that's like the, the, the whole persona of this organization. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to know what's going on. It's not impossible to know what's going on. We know full well what's going on. We have the whole time. And I did have a phone conversation with uh, his son, John, where I was trying to encourage him to try to reconcile with his parents, regardless of what's going on with his church, because I just don't want kids and parents to be at odds with one another. Well, maybe you should talk to Steven Anderson then, in that case. Me, he was deceiving me, and he tried to cherry pick some of the statements I made online, put them out there to frame them in a particular context, but... I'm not sure who he's referring to, John? As I was trying to level with him and try to and, and explain things to him from where I'm coming from, I made... That's not how Jonathan Shelley operates. Statements like, nothing you're saying is contradictory with your parents' testimony is, or other things like that and again what i'm meaning by context like that is saying look you're both telling me situations that have happened but you're coming at them from completely different perspectives you, you both are using different terminology and language about these things and i don't know exactly what's true i don't know what's the right way to look at these or frame them but that does not mean that anything i've said or anything that i've done has contradicted public statements or anything Every, everything that I've said publicly has been 100 percent true, and I'm not changing. Anything. That's not true. He's he's lying right now. Anything that I said publicly, except for the fact that I've changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've changed my mind. I've had I have more information at this point in time. In the public video I made, I said, "If I'm wrong, time will tell." So I didn't I didn't say, and I said, "People that have a different opinion than me, I can respect their opinion, not the slander and railing that they're doing, but I can understand their perspective." But that's not what happened. Again, the dude slandered somebody in retaliation for him breaking fellowship with Steven Anderson. I think on both sides of this issue, you have a lot of people making wild, crazy, slanderous, false accusations. And I really, really hate that. I really, really hate that. And I think that's confusing the matter. Again, the kids have been consistent. Steven Anderson 
has objectively lied beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's been determined that Miriam was not kidnapped by her uncle or whatever. That was a lie from Steven Anderson. Now, what has Miriam lied about? Nothing. I am going to have grace for all sides of this issue. That this it's not an all sides problem. It's not mean I would deal with slander or railing. Uh, in, in, in specific situations, especially dealing with our church. But I will have grace for all sides. I want to say, regarding the accusations, though, I'm still going to give Pastor Anderson the benefit of the doubt. I do believe that his children have been exaggerated. That's the thing. There isn't doubt. There is knowledge that he is a piece of trash that has hurt his children, seemingly because he likes it, seemingly because he's vindictive and violent and angry like that and deceitful about the things that they said and i think it would be extremely unwise for anybody to latch on to the statements that they've made um in my conversation with pastor anderson i'm going to just tell you what he told me and this is what i told don not much of anything he said in the video I said, did you use an electrical cord as a form of punishment? He said, yes. He said that when they were 10, 11, 12, they were making fun of the punishment not hurting. And so he chose to use a different instrument for a... All right, look, all I needed was an affirmation that he did. I wasn't asking for excuses or bullshit. If he used an electrical cord against children as a uh, form of whatever... He's a monster. That is a monstrously evil thing to do. And in fact, he did. He admitted it. That's all you should need. That's it. A period of time. I don't know exactly the amount of time, a few years or something like that. A few years, he says. From his perspective, he said it was moderate discipline. I decided to believe him for that testimony. The things Why decide to believe him here? That Solomon, Isaac, and John have said corroborate that as being true. And even some of the statements that they said were things like, I deserve the punishment that I got, or it was a certain amount. Are you kidding me? Well, I personally do not recommend and would not suggest or encourage anybody to use that instrument. I will not personally condemn someone just for the instrument. <clears throat> Are you kidding me? And I don't believe that the instrument was necessarily what the children are even complaining about. They're complaining about the method. Bro, you must be joking right now. You must be kidding me. How, when, and things like that. <laughs> Additionally, um, I asked him one question. I said, do you practice spousal discipline? And he said, Whatever I do, whatever I, I do is consensual between me and my wife. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Okay, look, it's not spousal discipline. That's not what's happening. It's abusing your wife, first of all. And second, your wife consents to being beaten. This is a joke. This has to be a joke. There is no bottom to these people. There is no low that they're unwilling to reach. These people are disgusting human beings. So um, Steven Anderson admitted to hitting his wife then, right? Is that fair to say? When asked if he engages in spousal discipline, quote unquote, he says yes, but consensual effectively, effectively, right? Is that, is that fair to say? That's enough right there. That's it. That's all I would need to call it and say, yeah, I'm done. I'm done with Steven Anderson. I don't want anything to do with this shit anymore. This is, this is wrong. What's it going to take for Jonathan Shelley to walk away from this disgusting mess? What's it going to take? Is there anything Steven Anderson could do that would turn him against Steven Anderson? And I ask no other questions. Okay? Whatever that means, I have... Suddenly he doesn't care what people do in the privacy of their own bedrooms, huh? Interesting. No idea. And I will never know, and I never want to know. Okay? If you disagree with me on that, I just simply wanted to ask. Dude, dude suddenly doesn't care what people do in their bedroom. That is wild, bro. That is so ridiculous. The bias, the intellectual dishonesty is out of this world. Question, and I will continue to give him 
whatever the benefit of the doubt on the situation. Whenever I, uh, this was probably months and months ago, I had been entertaining a sermon idea called Unruly Wives, where I was trying to decide what is the best course of action when you have a wife that's divorce, not being very obedient. And in that sermon, I obedient, okay. I was going to say specifically that I strongly disapprove of and do not agree with spousal discipline, but I cannot condemn. <clears throat> that is my personal opinion, and that still has not changed. But at the end of the day, I did talk with Pastor Anderson about this prior to any of this happening. <clears throat> and I felt like by me even talking about the subject, it was not going to be edifying or beneficial or help anyone. And so I. Are you kidding? I decided to avoid preaching on that topic. So he talked to Steven Anderson months ago when he was thinking about giving this sermon about spousal abuse, and Steven Anderson talked him out of it? Is that what he just said? If you want to ask me a question on that, I would be willing to ask you, or be willing to answer any question. Um, if there was any abuse, I would not cover that up, and I would not... That, that is what he is doing right now. That's what he's doing. Try to try to stop Pastor Anderson, or like have Pastor Anderson continue while trying to cover abuse. That's ridiculous. That's that's not something I would ever do. I've never done that. I think he's doing it. There's plenty of evidence that I've dealt with really uncomfortable situations, including even filing police reports on our own church members that I like and care about. So, you know, uh, if if you this you know uh, when the word abuse is thrown around. Every has a different de definition of that. And I, and I really don't like the virtue signaling of- Virtue signaling. <clears throat> Reporting abuse and standing against it is virtue signaling. I'm against abuse because I've never met a person in my life that says I'm for abuse. <laughs> okay? So you can, you can continue to say- You haven't? You haven't met a person that says they're for abuse before? Oh, well, I'll show you one. One second. Just take me one second and I'll show you. And I don't think that yelling at your kids is an effective form of discipline. I, I'm not saying it's wrong to ever yell as a parent because I think there are some times when yelling could be appropriate, but that shouldn't be a regular basis. Just your go-to discipline is yelling, right? Less yelling, more spanking is what we need in our families, okay? Because then there's less anger and less yelling. You just, you just spank, it's over, you move on. Well, I'm just going to ground them. I'm going to take away privileges. I'm going to uh, yell at them. But what does the Bible say is the best form of discipline? Yeah, hitting your kids, of course. Anyway, what was that? One more time, Jonathan. Like the virtue signaling of I'm against abuse because I've never met a person in my life that says I'm for abuse. Okay? <laughs> so you can, you can continue to say, like, I'm against abuse, and that sounds good, but everyone in the world agrees with you. What that means is, is important. <laughs> People get mad about trying to decide what that word means, but it's important considering... You know, I think it's pretty clear what that word means. Everybody, except for this guy, apparently, knows what that means. Everyone literally agrees with that statement. So, um, I have tried to, in my conversations with everyone, make sure I really understand what they're trying to say. And so, that being said, I think it's really important for us to focus on our church because that's the reason why we're an independent fundamental Baptist church. You notice that's the first word even in what we describe ourselves as. Um, the first word is new, actually. N-I-F-B. New Independent Fundamental Baptist. But okay, I guess I'm not going to split hairs. Fundamental Baptist church. You notice that's the first word even in what we describe ourselves as. And the reality is no matter what my opinion is or your opinion is, we can really only affect our our immediate situation. We can only affect our family, our church, and, and of course, you know, the internet causes us to have some relationships from afar, and I'm not against the internet. We need to be careful that we're not damaging the relationships that we have in real life, in our daily lives, in our physical presence, for some internet. Brother, that's the problem. The internet is giving people the ability to expose what these monstrously evil people are doing. This is such a joke. Relationship. I want you to go some places in the Bible with me this morning. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. 
I also believe that we should be praying for this situation, that whatever God wills will happen. Amen. And I have, a, I have so much confidence in the Lord, no matter what's going on, that he is going to be faithful, that I think that we should never be discouraged, because our church has gone through so many trials that we should be the last of people to doubt that the Lord will help us no matter what the situation is. That's good. <clears throat> Now, the Bible says first- so I'll tell you what's going to happen next. Stephen Anderson is going to weather this storm, wait it out, hunker down and wait for people to stop caring. And then he's going to come back. It'll be like it never happened. And then these people are going to say, well, that was God's will for Stephen Anderson to weather the storm and live his life and wait for everything to go away and then come back. God must want Stephen Anderson to run this church. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 it says for ye are yet carnal for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions are ye not carnal and walk as men for while one saith I am of Paul and another I am of Apollos are ye not carnal who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believe even as the Lord gave to every man. The Bible's very clear that Christianity should not devolve into pers personalities. And that, that has nothing, that does not mean you cannot have a favorite preacher. That does not mean you can't have a favorite church. It does not mean that you can't prefer or like somebody over another. But at the end of the day, we should not base our Christianity on a personality period. Right. That includes me, that includes Steadfast Baptist Church, and that includes anybody that you like. I believe that there's many people in our church who, if they were honest, they would say, my favorite pastor or preacher is Pastor Anderson. I'm sure many would say Pastor Roger Jimenez is their favorite pastor or preacher. I'm sure many people would say Pastor Bruce Mejia is their favorite pastor or preacher. I wouldn't even be surprised if... Okay, what's the point? Yes, people have favorite pastors, okay? Many people in here think their, past, their favorite pastor or preacher is people that have nothing to do with our movement or a local pastor somewhere else. And you know what? I think that that's healthy. I think that it's healthy that everybody likes different people and I have no problem and I will never. Well, it's not healthy that they're treating them like celebrities, like they're, you know, a pastor shouldn't, it shouldn't be about the pastor. Shouldn't it be about God? Fight you on that. If everyone in my church likes other people more than me, praise God, okay? Because I'm not the best at anything and I have mistakes too. And I think it's healthy if we all have a diversity of opinion because I think it will uh, produce in us an attitude and spirit of saying, we're gathered here together because of Christ. I want to go to another place, Galatians chapter number five, Galatians chapter number five. Every church should ultimately be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think that this is, this is what makes me sad, and I feel like I'm probably even guilty of this too, is making church members or making the flock feel like they have to decide between personality conflicts and their church decisions. It's not about personality conflicts. It's about this guy abusing his family physically. Are you shitting me? Feeling like they can't go to a church because of pastoral personality conflicts or issues. And that makes me sad. It makes me sad that someone would not go to the best church for them because of how they feel about a particular personality or person where there's a conflict or people are making people choose a side. And here's the thing. I am not going to make anyone choose any side. I'm not going to make anyone choose any opinion here. I'm not this is such a joke, dude. Honestly. I'm not going to make anyone do anything. I think we should give grace to everyone who has varying opinions on this. Right. And we should be loving for one another in this. Right. And what, what the devil would love is for us to attack each other. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. You know what God would love? I don't know about the devil. I think God would love it if you didn't cover up physical abuse. Or, you know, even if it's not covering it up, if you didn't defend it, he's defending it. He's excusing it, bare minimum. Follow the laws of building one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We need to make sure that we're not biting and devouring one another. Period. Right. Period. 
And, and here's the thing, we should not be dating and attacking Christians, period. Right. Now, sometimes, obviously, we have to correct our brethren. Sometimes we have to um, tell them that they're doing something wrong in a loving manner and spirit. But at the same time, there is millions of Christians in this world. And there are millions of people online. You, you cannot go online and correct every single brother and sister in Christ. And honestly, we should probably try our best to limit the corrections that we offer to those who are closest to us, to the people that we have a real relationship and that we know. Oh my God, dude. Okay, you have a real relationship and know Steven Anderson's children. They are the direct victims of this, or survivors more accurately, the direct survivors of, of his uh, attitudes, of his behavior. Exclude the internet entirely from the equation. Now, is he going to defend Steven Anderson's actions? How is he going to defend his, his actions uh, if he's throwing that argument out? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, tell me what you think about this in the comments. This is wild, man. We may watch the rest of it.